Hi, and welcome to JavaScript Mastery. Arrays are one of the most common things you're going to use as a JavaScript developer. So today I'm going to go over 10 JavaScript array methods that are going to make your life so much easier and process of dealing with arrays faster. We can begin by writing our example array that we are going to use throughout the video. So we can simply write, uh, let's say numbers, is equal to an array of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We can use this array to explain and explore all the different array methods that there are. So first, let's start with for each. For each executes a provided function once for each array element, and it helps you loop over arrays items. So let's see how it looks and behaves. We have an array of numbers and you can simply call for each on it. Then you provide a function to it. This function is going to run for each array element. Here we are using simple arrow functions because they are simple, clean and concise. The parameter of the function is going to be a single element. In this case, it is going to be a number. So this function is going to run for one, for two, three, four and five. And here we output what are we going to do with that number. So we can simply console.log it. And we are, we are going to console.log number and we can save it and run our function. We are going to use node to execute our simple index.js. And the output is just as we expected. One, two, three, four and five. Secondly, we are going to explore includes array method. This method checks if array includes the item that you specify. We can simply test it by typing our numbers array and then call includes on it. You need to pass a search element. So let's say we are searching for two. We are searching if that array includes the number two. You can pass in any element, so any value. It can be a string or it can be a number. Okay includes will return true if the array includes the item and it will return false if it doesn't. Okay, so we can simply console.log the output and we can save it and run our uh, index.js. And we can see that it returns here true. And if we type in num number six, which isn't included, we can run it again and it will return false, simple enough. Our third array method is filter. Filter creates a new array only including elements that pass the condition you provide. It is really important to note that filter creates a new array. So let's create it. We'll create a new array called filtered numbers and it will be equal to numbers.filter. Filter, the same as for each, takes in an arrow function. First part of the arrow function or the element and parameters are also the singular elements of that array. So it is going to be a number. And here goes the check for uh, pass, passing the test or not. So let's say we specify number smaller than three. So filtered numbers will include all the numbers that pass this test and this test is numbers that are smaller than three. So let's console.log our filtered numbers. And what do we expect to get? We will run our index.js one more time and we get a completely new array of one and two. And just for check, we can console.log our numbers and it should have stayed the same. Okay, so this is a really nice way of using the data or using only some of the data from our original array without mutating it. The fourth array method is map. Map creates a new array with results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. The important part of this sentence is that it creates a new array. It is really similar to for each, but you can create a new array with it. So let's create it. New numbers will be equal to numbers that map. And as in for each, our map also takes in an arrow function. And here goes a singular element. So 
a number. Now, here we can do anything with that number that is going to be included in our new uh, array. So we can simply try number plus one. Now we expect that every single one of our numbers is going to be incremented by one. Okay, so let's console.log our new numbers and we can run our index.js and we get two, three, four, five, and six. So we can do anything to our singular elements just in this function here using our that map. And as in our uh, filter method, you can see that our numbers array, so our original array, stayed completely the same. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. It's really important to note that you can do anything with our new array, but you can still keep our original array. Our next array method is going to be a reduce. The reduce method applies a function against an accumulator and each element in the array from left to right to reduce it to a single value. So now for the first time, we aren't going to get an array from our array, we are going to get a single value. Uh, some may think that uh, some may think that reduce is the hardest method to grasp or to have some knowledge of, but it is not that hard. We are going to explain it right now. So we are not going to get a new array, but we are going to get a single value. So we can set it up and call it sum because we are going to add all of these numbers together. So sum will be equal to numbers that reduce. And as in all our other array methods, we will pass in an arrow function. But now for the first time, our arrow function will have two parameters. First one is called accumulator. And the second is current value. And since we want to add them together, we are going to simply type accumulator plus current value. Okay, so what is this? Basically, accumulator is a variable, it is something. At the beginning, it is equal to zero. And later, we do something to accumulator for each round of our array. In this example, we add our current value to the accumulator each time. So current value is nothing more than a number. And we can write here number. So basically it's the same thing we had to all of our other array methods so far. First it is going to be one, then it is going to be two, three, four, and so on. So for the first round of our uh, numbers that reduce, we are going to have zero and then one. Then our number will be added to our accumulator and then accumulator will be equal to one. Afterwards, we will run it again. And then accumulator will be equal to one, but will add plus two and it is going to be equal to three and so on. So not to talk much, let's see it in action. We are going to console.log the sum and we are going to run our index.js. And as you can see, we get 15. So one plus three is three, plus three is six, six plus four is 10, and we get 15 after we add our last five. So as you can see, it is not that hard to understand our uh, reduce function. It has an accumulator and a current value. Accumulator is nothing more than one specific value that something is being uh, done with every single round of our reduce function for each of our array parameters. Simple as that. The sixth array method is sum. This method checks if at least one of the array's items passed the condition. If the condition is passed, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. So let's see sum in action. First, we use our array and then call sum on it. And as always, we have an arrow function inside. Here is the condition. And here is the number as always. The condition, let's say, will be number is less than three. So if only one of these elements, only one, passes the condition, this whole function is going to return true. And we can console it log to see it. So it is console.log and then we run our index. 
and it returns true because both 1 and 2 return true. Okay, so let's say it for 1 and it returns false because none of the elements pass the condition. Okay, our seventh array method is really similar but also really different. It is every. This method checks if all arrays items pass the condition. If passed, they return true, otherwise it returns false. Okay, so we do the same things. We call numbers and then every. We pass in an arrow function. Here we have a singular number and here we have a condition. We can do the same condition as we did before. We can call our console.log again and here, this is the difference. In every, every single of these elements need to pass the condition. So our next array method is sort. This method is used to arrange or sort arrays items either in ascending or descending order. So let's see it in action. We'll create a new array called sorted array and it is also going to be equal to numbers that sort and it will have an arrow function. Now in here, you put the options on how to solve the array. And in here, you have the parameters going from left to right. So A and B, they can be called whatever. So it is going from left to right, one, two, three, four, and five, and it is comparing the numbers. Okay, so if we just leave it as this, and we console.log our sorted array, and run our index.js, we get one, two, three, four, five, and six, but it was already sold, so let's try three, four, five, and two. Okay, we run it again, and we don't get it sorted. Now, here are the options for the solve. So let's say A is bigger than B. Okay, if we run it again, we should get one, two, three, four, and five. As you can see, it is sold. If you want a descending order, you simply swap the operation sign and you run it again and you get 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. With sort, you can do so much more than simply sort the numbers for, for some order or sort the letters in alphabetical order. You can do so much more, but this is outside of the scope of this video, so we may cover it sometime soon. Okay, now similarly you have reverse. So as you can see here, we got five, four, three, two, and one, and you can simply do, let's say, let's return this to our original array, four and five, and we can also call our numbers that reverse, and that will also return our array. But there are a few differences. So let's console.log and run it. As you can see here, we get one, two, three, four, and five. And that is because of one big takeaway. So although we are placing our new, newly sorted array in a new variable, sorted array, numbers that sort is actually mutating our real array called numbers. So numbers will also be five, four, three, two, one and then we will also return it to one, two, three, and four. We can simply remove our sort and sorted array and then call our reverse to see the real result. So we get five, four, three, two, and one. Our last array method is concat. Concat is used to merge two or more arrays. This method does not change the existing arrays, but instead it returns a new array. So to see it in action, we first need to create our second array and uh, let's call it numbers two and it will have five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. Okay, now we simply type numbers and then call concat with second array or second and third as parameters. Okay, we just put numbers two and we simply create a new array that will be equal to the result of two arrays added together. Okay, so let's type that to the console. 
and run our index.js. And as you can see, we get one array from numbers one to 10. And if we console our numbers array and our numbers two array, we'll see that they are actually unchanged. So concat is really awesome with dealing with two or more arrays. That's it for this video. This was only a beginner to intermediate introduction to array methods. If you'd like to see something more complex, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you like the video and stay tuned for more. Thank you.